Hey, welcome back to another video. This is Slider Drift. I do sailing and DIY stuff. At the moment, mostly DIY stuff. In this video, it's just a whole bunch of little things that have been building up, and I just thought I'd make a whole video and just smash them all out. So there's a fair few things. What are they? My anchor chain is getting a bit of growth on it. It's nothing major, but I do want to clean that up and put some chain markings on the chain. I've got this little security camera that I want to install basically above my head so I can keep an eye on that thing because there are grubs around. I've got a little tiller extension. I want to install that on the tiller so I can sort of sit up on the edge of the cockpit there and still steer the boat and hang over the boat. That's cool. I'm, pretty, I'm looking forward to that. I've got a whole bunch of telltales that I've been meaning to install, so I'm going to do that. I have a switch that I want to install in my bilge pump system. The switch has no moving parts. It works off some sort of sensor somehow and it can switch on, yeah, 12 or 24 volt circuit. So what I want to do is install that into the bilge, into the pumps. And so if the water actually gets up to this sensor, then it will switch on the pump and it will also turn on a little audible alarm so I can hear that. Just as an extra backup to my backup to my backup. I do have a new monitor and it is obviously plugging into the wall 230 volts. The actual monitor brick goes from 230 volts down to 20 volts and so I want to cut that out of the system and use a little buck converter go straight from 48 volts nominal to 20 volts and yeah just put a little switch in so that's going to be all DC and I don't have to worry about that going from 48 volts to 230 volts through the inverter and then back down through its own little sort of step down transformer to 20 volts so cut all that out and make that all a bit simpler and that's probably about it i've probably forgot some things oh there is one extra thing so we might as well kick the video off with that i have this mirror that i was going to install down here somewhere but then uh, it's been sort of sitting around because it's quite low priority, a mirror. And then I realized I don't hardly even use the mirror anyways. There's a quite crappy looking mirror in the head. And so I figure I'm just going to switch that out. So I'm going to switch that mirror out and try and make it look a little bit fancy and put some LED lights behind the mirror and see if I can get a nice little lighting effect going on in the head. All right, that's probably it. Let's just get this started because i got a feeling uh, this is going to be a big one. All right. Today we learn. My body is actually white light. What's yours? What color is yours? <gasps> no way! You've got a different color. I see that. Off, you do so. Look, I'm white. Oh, you see? Or is it just that I'm touching? No. no. Oh, oh, damn it! <laughs> Thought I discovered something. This is the head. You guys haven't been in here before. We have just all my bits, some Fritonia, I don't know what that is, leafy plant, and old man's beard. And this is what we're going to replace. The output voltage of these little LEDs is 12 volts. So this is just a little transformer that's stepping it down from 240 to 12. That means this is 12 volts. So I'm just gonna cut this and uh, splice it in somewhere. The final product looks quite good. Quite really good actually. And there's my pandas. I'm almost ready. Just gotta do some lines and some fenders. It's about an hour until high tide. I wanna get over to that pontoon over there. There is a bit of growth that's going on on the chain. I really wanna get that off. So I've got my pressure washer. I wanna get to the pontoon, pull about half of the chain out that's um, that's got the growth on it, clean it up. And then I've got these little colored chain things that you put inside the chain so you can tell exactly how far it is because my previous system of the cable ties is not really really holding up over time. Okay, let's go. Always nerve-wracking. Docking by myself. Not 
too bad. I did uh, scuff up a little bit here, but there is a nice bit of rubber there. So I'm gonna call that one a success. Getting out of here is gonna be a little bit more tricky with that boat right there. He seems to um, always anchor as close as possible to the pontoon because his tender's never working. The Australian sun can be harsh. If you're out in the sun, it's a good idea to slip on a t-shirt, slop on some sunscreen, slap on a hat. Don't forget to slurp some water. Brought to you by Skin Cancer Culture Australia. Now these fit in between the links. So now I just got to remember the system that I decided on when I bought them all. Red for all the in between 10 meters, so 15, 25, 35, etc. And yellow, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. I just think these are going to fall out actually. But I've got a feeling they're just going to fall straight out. So I might have to go back to the uh, cable ties. Actually painting the chain is no good because the chain just gets covered with sort of like silt and stuff. So um, I'll just end up not being able to see that anyways. I think I figured it out. I was trying to put them all in, in this ways and <laughs> I think they go that way. That makes way more sense. Good one, Timon. It is a bit squeaky here, but yeah, mission sort of accomplished. Now I just gotta pack everything up. So I've got, there's 10, that's uh, 15, 25, that's 45, 35. And I almost always around here, I'm always doing 20 meters. And just in case some of them fall off, I've got two yellows for 20. Plus I've also thrown a couple of blues on there just in case they fall off. There's no other blue anywhere on the system. So I know if I see blue, it's almost always what I'm anchoring out here, 20 meters. All right, pack this shit up. Okay, I have this Uni Dan App Cam Solo Pro. Nothing sponsored. Apparently it just runs off batteries. It can hook into my Wi-Fi system so I can monitor it remotely. And also it doesn't take like a subscription, that sort of thing. So on the surface, this seems really good. I'm going to give it a go. It's more of a deterrent to stop people from trying to steal my shit. <laughs> I have had someone have a go at my outboard. Luckily that night I locked it up. This was down in Tweed. This wasn't here on the Gold Coast. Tweed's like the southern end of the Gold Coast. I just want uh, a little bit of extra added security because apparently this one, like a big light comes on um, and you can even have recordings that will go off or you can log into it when it notifies you that it's detected motion and you can literally speak through it. <laughs> <laughs> Oi mate, can you stop stealing my stuff? Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna live up to that, but you guys will know pretty soon. I want to try and install this. Camera has been started up. Please run the app, add the camera, and set it up. Please run the app, add the camera, and set it up. I'm getting there. Just give me a second. Check this out. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Brilliant shot of my washing. You guys will enjoy that. There is a light that goes on and off whenever it detects motion. Yeah, a little siren that goes off. You can set a schedule, so the motion sensor will only go off as far as recording and the light and the siren, if you've got that all activated between this hour and this hour. So you set that all up with the app. Not sponsored, obviously, but initially, I'm liking it. Once the sun goes down, I will jump in the tender and just get really fine tune that sensitivity. So I'll go up and pretend I'm sort of stealing shit. The perfect sensitivity where it's not picking up the movement of the boat, but it is picking up someone trying to steal my stuff. Okay, next on the list is this tiller extension. Whoopsies. This was given to me by a mate, Bill, if you're watching. Thank you so much, Bill. He had a whole heap of 
bits and pieces and he said he was never gonna use it and so he gave it to me. I'm finally getting around to installing it. It's gonna be quite quick to install. I don't imagine running into any problems. I can't believe I just said that. It is looking a bit worn and a bit old. So what I wanna do is just sand back this white part, aluminium, and then just give it a quick coat of paint as well. That should make the whole thing look a little bit nicer and a little bit better. It is adjustable. Whoa, too far. It is adjustable, yeah, and I'm uh, looking forward to actually using it underway. That'll mean I'll be able to sort of sit up on the edge and sort of hang over the boat and, and still steer the boat. the best spot to install this. Man, I feel bad putting a hole, putting holes in this nice timber. I don't know if you guys can actually see this, but this is a bit better way of doing it. So I've put this extra little nut in here. So this in between here and here is super tight. I'm not gonna leave this bolt. I'm gonna go get one that doesn't protrude as much. And I've just left the tiniest little gap in here for this to swing around and move. So that seems a lot better to me. I don't know, obviously there's no instructions, nor would I probably read them if I had them. I'm just winging it here. Okay, yeah, <laughs> all right, let's give it a go. Very good, nice. Oh, uh, someone actually left a comment not too long ago saying, dude, wear a shirt. Look, mate, I don't know what uh, conservative winter wonderland you're from, but this is Australia and it's hot as fuck here, so. If you're having trouble concentrating at work because you can't tear your eyes away from this perfectly sculpted body, yeah, that's something you might need to address. The furling line that comes back to the cockpit just here, a bit of wear for when the rope is rubbing on the on the fiberglass on the cockpit. Been like that for a while. I've been just trying to sort of pull it and not run it over the fiberglass, but I finally got this. No wear chafe guard, not affiliated. I should be able to like conform this to the angle that it needs to be. And then when the rope's running across that, there shouldn't be any wear. It says marine grade 316 stainless steel, but it is less than a millimeter thick. Don't know how long that's gonna last. Surely that's not gonna last very long, but oh well, got it now. Chaps, this is just cut straight through it, no problems, but I just have to keep you guys updated on whether this works or not. Okay. Sometimes when I use a winch to haul in this, this rope sort of slides down onto there a little bit when it's under load, so yeah. That should keep me out of trouble. This is just a little interlude I got the shits with. This is the map table. This whole area will be getting redone, but I realized today that's not gonna be before Fiji. So now I'm just trying to refine this whole area so it's usable. What I just found, <laughs> this, you guys might be interested in this. Can you see that? Hopefully that's in focus. Me as a kid and with hair. Check it out. It is four gaskets for little Steve. <laughs> the coffee machine. These break like once every two years or one year. Can you tell coffee is literally keeping the system alive? That's like the next at least four years worth. All that's as neat as I can get it. So there is a little bit of um, perspex or acrylic here with a shitty map underneath. It sort of looks pretty good as far as transparency is concerned, but I didn't actually have a real good look and that is really, really bad. So initially I tried to put a, a poster underneath there to make this all look nice and it just looked absolutely horrible. So the next step is I don't want to invest too much money into this area and acrylic is actually really expensive. I've got this carbon fiber film and I'm hoping that if I basically just wrap this bit of acrylic in the carbon fiber film, that will make this area look a little bit neater and get me by until the day, which I'm really looking forward to when this whole area 
gets remade. Actually, I'm looking forward to that getting remade, that getting remade, that getting remade, and this getting remade. Just a few things. What was I thinking putting a photo underneath that? That is all done. There is definitely, can you guys see those creases? A few little creases, a few little bubbles, but on the whole, I think that makes that area a little bit better, a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. That looks pretty good. Onwards. Got a whole bunch of these telltales that I'm gonna put on the main now. I was hoping to do this before the wind got up. There was already a bit of wind, but it shouldn't be too bad. Let's see if I can get these on. Make me a better sailor, yo. I ended up putting one telltale at the end of every baton and three other telltales up near the luff at 40%, 60% and 80% to the top of the main. I think the telltales were telling me it was probably a bit windy to be doing this job. Probably blowing about 25, but it's done. Okay, so I got this switch. It's a solid state switch. So there's no mechanical moving parts or anything like that. And it will detect when there's water and it will turn on a circuit for me. What I'm gonna hook this up to, I'm gonna put it above both bilge pumps. I have two bilge pumps and put it there, wire it in as a sort of a fail safe, just in case the, cause the both bilge pumps work of a float when the water pushes the float up they turn on and so if they get stuck for some reason if there's debris there's always sort of like a bit of algae gross stuff down there so this way if the water does get above them and for some reason they don't activate well then when the water goes above these two little you can't actually see them but these two little sensory sort of things then it will turn both of them on and i also Want to duck down to J car and get a little speaker that will um, off put like an audible sound to know when the bilge pumps are actually on or not. Another thing I also want to do whilst I'm at it is way back in the day I got told by the surveyor to um, affix the bilge pumps permanently and at the moment the one that needs to be affixed permanently is just being held down by um, a big filter. <laughs> so I'll get a piece of plastic and epoxy that into the bilge and then affix it permanently so that this boat is up to scratch on what the survey told me to do two years ago. A little bit of water in there. The only water now that gets into my bilge just comes basically straight down the middle of the mast from all the little tiny holes and bits and pieces where the rain can get into the mast. Once it's on the inside, it sort of drips down all the way into my bilge. But... This is just a piece that I use if I ever need to drill through something. I'll dr put this underneath and yeah, so it won't go into the boat or inside or into the pavement or whatever. Yeah, don't be fooled, it's not wood, it's plastic. Okay, <laughs> they are affixed now. I'm not sure if you can see them, but if I cover up these two little sensors. That's a rather annoying sound and a rather good sound that the pump is turning on. It's good that the bilge pump float switch is actually affixed down like the surveyor said to do. And it's good that I've got a little audible alarm in there now as well, which gives me a little bit more peace of mind. Just got to remind myself to fill up the bilge at one stage and actually test out this little sensor. I'm gonna call that done, put a pin in it. Next up on the agenda is my new monitor. Got this uh, monitor arm, can you guys actually see that? Got a monitor arm here, 
the whole thing swing around like that for when I'm editing at the moment. That works really well. I mainly got this for when I'm editing, but also to watch movies. I'm very much into movies. I don't know if you've noticed, but yeah, movies are my bread and butter. I hope to get more into sort of making little creative sort of narratives and stories within this channel um, for you guys to enjoy. It's a Samsung TV and at the moment it's running off this massive brick. I want to refine it. So I've had a look. Specifications say that this is running at. That's my phone. The specifications say that this is running at 20 volts. I've got this off the shelf buck converter thing, not affiliated anyway, but I do like these because they seem quite sealed and robust. This will convert down from 48 volts to the 20 volts. So before I go ahead and cut that cord and install this with my multimeter, I want to measure this and find out that it is actually running at 20 volts, obviously DC. And I also want to measure the output of this and make sure that that's running at 20 as well. Hardwire it in and put a switch probably right there. And then I will officially have 12, 20, 24, 48. <laughs> oh, and six. Oh my Lord. That is ridiculous. Like I thought, the inside is the positive and the outside is the negative. And that was reading exactly 20 volts. No surprises there. I'm not forgetting anything, right? <laughs> I don't know, just in the back of my mind, it's very, it's just, it's just taboo to be altering sort of electronics like this, even though what I'm doing is very simple. Taboo. I've just made a mistake. <laughs> Oh golly. Looks like there's only one wire in there. Surely that's not possible. It seems to be coax cable, which makes me think, have they just done that to actually shield noise? I would really like to know from you guys, I'm gonna wire this in, and obviously from here onwards, it's not gonna be coax. Does it matter? I guess we'll find out whether my monitor works or not, but, um, but yeah, I'd really like to hear somebody in the comments that knows a lot more than me on whether this is coaxial by design or or what is the reason behind that, you know? I really want the voltage to be as bang on as possible. Um, I don't know if this matters. This is the first time I've done so something sort of like this. So I really want to get it bang on. And from the behind of here, it's not very long to the TV and obviously back again, but <clears throat> I've just done some simple voltage drop calculators online and it do, does look like it's going to drop not much i was they were varying but it was sort of coming out at about 19.7 or 8 volts i don't know whether that's going to matter but because i can rectify that a little bit i'm going to do it so instead of putting the buck converter behind here i will run 48 volts into here from there i will convert it from the 48 volts to 20 and then it's only got essentially maximum full loop two feet i'm not even going to remotely have time for, to do this because i'm gonna go watch spider-man with my niece and nephew that is by far one of the best soldiers i've done getting better getting better it's all wired in now doesn't look pretty, but at this point, I've totally lost control of making things look pretty. Until the rewire, which hopefully happens soon. Yeah, it's just gonna have to look like that. Please no smoke, please no smoke. 20.1, is one two hundredth? Is one two hundredth going to matter? Initial conclusions are that is a success. That's pretty cool. That's wired straight to the DC side now. So there's no little conversion loss with this massive thing. I've also wired the switch onto the 48 volt side of the converter. That way I can actually, when I switch it off, it actually switches the converter off. If I had to put the switch on the 20 volt side, so it's going from 48 nominal to 20 volts. If I had to put the switch on the 20 volt side, um, essentially that converter would be can always on. I don't know how much power would be pulling, but why do that if I don't need to do that? I've also got a fuse on the 48 volt side and a fuse on the 20 volt side. So everything seems up to scratch besides the ridiculously messy wiring going on. 
I will be changing it sometime soon. Now there is one final thing that I've got to do today. I want to install it right on the front of my tender because I've been doing lots of anchoring when I'm going surfing and stuff like that. And depending on the conditions, I'm altering how much uh, road that I'm throwing out. So if I've got this on the front, then I won't have to tie it at the moment. I've been tying it to these sort of like handles and yeah, there's a lot of sort of chafe going on there. So I figure if I've got this on the front, I can just and use whatever the length that I need. Looks good, hey, the new uh, the new monitor setup. Obviously that's not the final position. Everything's gonna get redone like you've heard a million times, but yeah, at the moment, I'm liking it. I'm liking editing with a massive monitor. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you got something out of it, at the very least some entertainment or perhaps a laugh. In the next video, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. You don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm definitely not giving you any hint right now. So I could be doing anything. See you in the next video. Okay, bye. <laughs>